Hello again. It's been a while. I've kind of gotten behind on recording these videos. So let's catch up, or begin to, with today's dawn post called Hannah Arendt on loving and renewing the common world. The most interesting philosopher in today's Ko-Fi lineup for my money, and by far the one with the most timely and relevant message for this moment when the future of democracy feels so precarious, is Hannah Arendt. She warned us to beware the terribly and terrifyingly normal average fellow citizens we'd never suspect of harboring a capacity for sadism and violence. She said, the sad truth is, most evil is done by people who never make up their minds to be good or evil. As citizens, we must prevent wrongdoing because the world in which we all live, wrongdoer, wrong sufferer, and spectator is at stake. Before mass leaders seize the power to fit reality to their lies, their propaganda is marked by its extreme contempt for facts as such. For in their opinion, fact depends entirely on the power of the man who can fabricate it. And the ideal subject of totalitarian rule is not the convinced Nazi or the convinced communist, but people for whom the distinction between fact and fiction, that is the reality of experience, and the distinction between true and false, that is the standards of thought, no longer exist that from origins of totalitarianism. And she's not just talking about Nazis. In other words, fantasy land is ripe for the picking. There may never in history have been such a concentration of banal, unthinking, uninformed, lonely, isolated, disconnected, paranoid slash conspiratorial people as we find here now. Paranoid, conspiratorial, well, Farhad Manju has an interesting piece in the New York Times on that theme. He says, to a great many Americans, digital communication has already rendered empirical observable reality beside the point. Many Americans have become so deeply distrustful of one another that whatever happens on November 3, they may refuse to accept the outcome. Combating the deception that has overrun public discourse should be a primary goal of our society. Otherwise, America ends in lies. And why lonely? Well, Samantha Rose Hill of the Hannah Arendt Center for Politics and Humanities has an essay in Eon. And also, uh, I've linked on my uh, site to uh, her recommendations for the best books by and on Hannah Arendt. Check that out. But in Eon, she writes, loneliness radically cuts people off from human connection. Arendt defined loneliness as a kind of wilderness where a person feels deserted by all worldliness and human companionship, even when surrounded by others. The word she used in her mother tongue for loneliness was verlassenheit a state of being abandoned, or abandonness. Loneliness, she argued, is among the most radical and desperate experiences of man because in loneliness we are unable to realize our full capacity for action as human beings. When we experience loneliness, we are unable to make new beginnings. But don't overlook the crucial distinction here between loneliness and solitude. The latter being indispensable for the independence of thought that enables us to think for ourselves. Sapereade, as Arendt's fellow Königsbergian implored, that's Immanuel Kant, who also was born in that city, now known as Kaliningrad, Russia. We need the private realm of solitude to be alone with ourselves and think. Well, let us hope she was right to think a relative few thinking-informed connected citizens would or could suffice 
to neutralize the threat of all those unthinking masses. Under conditions of terror, most people will comply, but some will not, she says. No more is required, and no more can reasonably be asked for this planet to remain a place fit for human habitation. And let us hope we can still share and vindicate her confidence in the power of education to resist the anti-democratic tide. She says, education is the point at which we decide whether we love the world enough to assume responsibility for it. And by the same token, save it from that ruin which except for renewal, except for the coming of the new and the young would be inevitable. And education too is where we decide whether we love our children enough not to expel them from our world and leave them to their own devices, nor to strike from their hands their chance of undertaking something new, something unforeseen by us, but to prepare them in advance for the task of renewing a common world. Love for the common world, the shared world, for John Dewey's continuous human community in which we are a link, is precisely what we should be teaching and learning. Nothing else will save democracy or preserve a habitable planet for the next generations. That's why voting is such a big deal, even for blue voters in red states and vice versa. It's our most democratic ritual of renewal. And uh, while I have you here, let me show you an odd new appliance I've acquired. It looks weird. It'll look even weirder when I do this <laughs> and go out walking. But with this, I can put the phone right in front of my face, probably too close. And we can go out walking. And uh, let's do a little trial run right here, right now. Here we go. It's going to work. So, yeah, that's a weird looking contraption, all right. But now I don't have to sit here and uh, there we go. Thing swivels, I can show you my surroundings, I'll show you PETA. <laughs> Nell's around here somewhere too. So uh, you know, let's let's just do a, a quick trial. Let's see what it looks like. Can you stand up. Hm. And walk. Walk and talk. If I can get the thing situated and stabilized. Then uh, one of these fine fall days, we go out walking during class. We can, we can make Zoom truly mobile. Some people do that behind the wheel. That's not advised, but this should be perfectly safe, right? So, yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna give this a try. I can uh, just go around my little loop down here in Dogland, kind of like Darwin with his dogs at the Sandwalk. But I'll try not to do that when there are people next door running their uh, mowers and blowers in the future. But, uh, but yeah, I think this is, this is a, uh, a fixture worth having. So, and there's Nellie. Hey, Nellie. Okay, well I will uh, see you in class, talk to you later.